the Reagan administration came into office uh, 20 years ago declaring that the war against international terrorism would be the core of our foreign policy, uh, describing it in terms of the kind they just mentioned and others. Uh, and it, it was the core of our foreign policy. The Reagan administration responded to this uh, plague uh, spread by depraved opponents of civilization itself by creating a, an extraordinary international terrorist network totally unprecedented in scale, uh, which carried out massive atrocities all over the world, primarily, well, partly nearby, but not only there. Uh, I won't run through the record. I, you're all educated people, so I'm sure you learned about it in high school. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'll just mention uh, one case uh, which is totally uncontroversial, so we don't have to argue about it. Uh, by no means the most extreme, but uncontroversial. It's uncontroversial because of the judgments of the highest international authorities, uh, the International Court of Justice, the World Court, and the uh, UN Security Council. Uh, so this one is uncontroversial, at least among people who have some minimal concern for international law, human rights, uh, justice, and other things like that. And uh, now I'll leave you an exercise. You can estimate the size of that category by simply asking how often this uncontroversial case uh, has been mentioned uh, in the commentary of the last month. And it's a particularly relevant one, not only because it's uncontroversial, but because it does offer a precedent uh, as to how a law-abiding state uh, would respond to, uh, did respond, in fact, to a case of international terrorism, which is uncontroversial. Uh, and uh, was even more extreme than uh, uh, the events of September 11th. I'm talking about the Reagan U.S. war against Nicaragua, which left tens of thousands of people dead, uh, the country ruined, perhaps beyond recovery. Uh, it, uh, Nicaragua d did respond. They didn't respond by setting off bombs in Washington. Uh, they responded by taking it to the world court uh, presenting a case. They had no problem putting together evidence. Uh, the World Court accepted their case, ruled in their favor, uh, ordered the, uh, condemned what it called the unlawful use of force, which is another word for international terrorism by the United States, uh, ordered the United States to uh, uh, terminate the crime and to pay massive reparations. The United States, of course, dismissed the court judgment with total contempt and announced that it would not accept the jurisdiction of the court henceforth. Uh, the uh, Nicaragua then uh, went to the UN Security Council, which uh, considered a resolution calling on all states to observe international law. Uh, no one was mentioned, but everyone understood. Uh, the United States vetoed the resolution. It now stands as the only state on record, which has both been condemned by the World Court for international terrorism and has vetoed uh, the Security Council resolution calling on states to uh, observe international law. Uh, it, uh, Nicaragua then went to the General Assembly, where there's technically no veto, but a negative U.S. vote amounts to a veto. Uh, it passed a similar resolution uh, with uh, only the United States, Israel, and El Salvador opposed. Uh, the following year, again, this time, the United States could only rally Israel to the cause, so two votes opposed to observing international law. At that point, Nicaragua couldn't do anything lawful. It tried all the measures. Uh, they don't work in a wor world that is ruled by force. Uh, uh, this case, I must say, is uncontroversial, uh, but it's by no means the, the most extreme. Uh, it's also very, we gain a lot of insight into our own culture and society and what's happening now uh, by asking how much we know about all this and how much we talk about it, how much you learn about it in school, you know, how much it's all over the front pages. And this is only the beginning. Uh, the United States responded to the World Court and the Security Council by immediately escalating the war very quickly. That was a bipartisan decision, incidentally. Uh, the uh, war, the terms of the war were also changed. Uh, for the first time, there were official orders given, official orders, uh, to the terrorist army 
uh, to attack what are called soft targets, uh, meaning undefended civilian targets, uh, and to keep away from the Nicaraguan army. They were able to do that because the United States had total control of the air over Nicaragua and was able to uh, the mercenary army uh, was supplied with advanced communication equipment. It wasn't a guerrilla army in the normal sense and could get instructions about the disposition of Nicaraguan army forces so they could attack uh, agricultural collectives, um, health clinics, and so on, soft targets uh, with impunity. Those were the official orders. Uh, what was the reaction? It was known and there was a reaction to it. it the policy was regarded as sensible by left liberal opinion. Uh, so uh, Michael Kinsley, who represents the left in mainstream discussion, uh, wrote an article in which he said that uh, we shouldn't be too quick to criticize this policy as Human Rights Watch had just done. Uh, he said, a sensible policy must meet the cost of the test of cost-benefit analysis. That is, an, I'm quoting now, an analysis of the amount of blood and misery that will be poured in and the likelihood that democracy will emerge at the other end. Uh, democracy as the US uh, understands the term, which is graphically illustrated in the surrounding countries. Uh, notice that it's axiomatic that the United States US elites have the right to conduct the analysis uh, and to pursue the project if it passes their tests. And it did pass their tests, it worked. Uh, when Nicaragua finally succumbed to uh, superpower assault, uh, commentators openly and cheerfully lauded the success of the methods that were adopted and described them accurately. So I'll quote Time Magazine just to pick one. Uh, lauded the success of the methods adopted to wreck the economy and prosecute a long and deadly proxy war until the exhausted natives overthrow the unwanted government themselves with a cost to us that is minimal uh, uh, and uh, leaving the victims with wrecked bridges, sabotaged power stations, and ruined farms, and thus providing the U.S. candidate with a winning issue, ending the impoverishment of the people of Nicaragua. Uh, the New York Times uh, had a headline saying, Americans united in joy uh, at this outcome. Uh, that's the culture in which we live. Uh, and it reveals several facts. Uh, one is the fact that terrorism works. It doesn't fail. It works. Violence usually works. That's world history. Uh, secondly, it's a very serious analytic error to say, as is commonly done, uh, that terrorism is a weapon of the weak. Uh, like other means of violence, it's primarily a weapon of the strong. Uh, overwhelmingly, in fact. It is held to be a weapon of the weak because the strong also control the doctrinal systems and their terror doesn't count as terror. Uh, that's close to universal. I can't think of an exception, historical exception, even the worst mass murderers uh, viewed the world that way. So take the Nazis. Now, they weren't carrying out terror in occupied Europe. They were protecting the population from the terrorism of the partisans. Uh, and like other resistance movements, there was terrorism. Uh, the Nazis were carrying out counter-terror. Furthermore, the United States essentially agreed with that. Uh, after the war, uh, the U.S. Army uh, took, uh, did extensive studies of uh, Nazi counter-terror operations in Europe. First, I should say that the U.S. picked them up and began carrying them out itself, against, often against the same targets the former resistance. Uh, but the uh, army, uh, the military also studied the Nazi methods, published interesting studies, sometimes critical of them because they were inefficiently carried out. So it was a critical analysis of, you know, they didn't do this right, they didn't do that right. Uh, but uh, those methods, uh, with the advice of uh, Wehrmacht officers who were brought over here, uh, became the manuals of counterinsurgency, of counterterror, of low intensity conflict as it's called, and are the manuals and are the procedures that are being used. So it's not just that the Nazis did it, it's that it was regarded as the right thing to do by the leaders of Western civilization, that is us, who then proceeded to do it themselves. Uh, terrorism is not the weapon of the weak. Uh, it is uh, the weapon of those who are against us, whoever us happens to be. Uh, and if you can find a historical exception to that, I'd be interested in seeing it. 
Uh, well, uh, uh, an interesting indication of the nature of our culture, our high culture, uh, is the uh, way in which all of this is regarded. One way it's regarded is just suppressing it. So almost nobody's ever heard of it. Uh, the, uh, uh, and the power of American propaganda and doctrine is so strong that even among the victims it's barely known. I mean, when you t talk to this, about this to you know, people in Argentina, you have to remind them before they say, oh yeah, that happened, we forgot about it. It's deeply suppressed. Uh, the power, uh, uh, the, pow the sheer consequences of monopoly of violence can be very powerful uh, in ideological and other terms. Uh, well, uh, one illuminating aspect of our own attitude toward terrorism, ours, uh, is the reaction to the idea that Nicaragua might have the right to defend itself. Actually, I went through this in some detail with you know, database searches and that sort of thing. The idea that Nicaragua might have the right to defend itself was considered outrageous. Uh, there is virtually nothing in common to mainstream commentary indicating that Nicaragua might have that right. And that fact was exploited by the Reagan administration and its propaganda in an interesting way. Those of you who are around at that time will remember that they periodically floated rumors uh, that the Nicaraguans were getting uh, MiG jets, jets from Russia. Uh, at that point, the hawks and the doves split. The hawks said, okay, let's bomb them. Uh, the doves said, wait a minute, let's see if the rumors are true. And if the rumors are true, then let's bomb them uh, because they're a threat to the United States. Uh, why, incidentally, were they getting MiGs? Well, because the United States, they try to get jet planes from European countries, but the United States put pressure on its allies uh, so they wouldn't send them means of defense because they wanted uh, the, them to turn to the Russians. That's good for propaganda purposes. Then they become a threat to us. Right? You remember they were just two, two, two days march from uh, Harlingen, Texas. We actually declared a national emergency in 1985 to protect the country from the threat of Nicaragua. The, uh, uh, and it stayed in force. But so it was much better for them to get arms from the Russians. Well, uh, the, uh, why would they want jet planes? Well, for the reasons that I already mentioned. Uh, the United States had total control of their airspace, was overflying it, uh, and using that to provide instructions to the terrorist army uh, to enable them to attack soft targets uh, without running into the army that might defend them. So therefore, uh, but when, and everyone knew that that was the reason, you know, they're not gonna use their jet planes for anything else. Uh, but the idea that Nicaragua should be permitted to defend its airspace against a superpower attack that is directing terrorist forces to attack undefended civilian targets, that was considered in the United States outrageous and uniformly so. Exceptions are so slight, you know, I can practically list them. I don't suggest that you take my word for this. Have a look. Uh, includes our own senators, incidentally. Uh, the, uh, 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 an, another illustration of how we regard terrorism is happening right now. Uh, there's a, the U.S. has just appointed an ambassador to the United Nations to uh, lead the war against terrorism uh, a couple of weeks ago. Who is he? Well, his name's John Negroponte. Uh, he was the uh, U.S. ambassador in the fiefdom, which is what it is, of Honduras in the early 1980s. There was a little fuss made about the fact that he must have been aware, as he certainly was, uh, of the uh, uh, large-scale murders and other atrocities that were carrying, being carried out by the security forces in Honduras that we were supporting, but that's a small part of it. In, uh, as proconsul of Honduras, uh, as he was called there, uh, he, was super, he was the local supervisor for the terrorist war based in Honduras, uh, for which his government was condemned by the World Court uh, and then the Security Council in a vetoed resolution. And he was just appointed as uh, a UN ambassador to lead the war against terror. Uh, another small experiment you can do is uh, check and see uh, what the reaction was to this. Uh, well, I'll tell you what you're gonna find, but find it for yourself. Uh, that tells us a lot about the war against uh, terrorism and about ourselves. Uh, after uh, the United States uh, 
took over the country again under the conditions that were so graphically